Let's say you're on Twitter one day and you suddenly see this new puzzling tweet from Elon. Now, admittedly, sometimes it's not quite clear exactly what Elon is trying to say, but you have a good hunch that this tweet is saying that shitcoin is going to go to the moon. You rush onto Etherscan to investigate this mysterious shitcoin. You definitely want to scoop up as much of the shitcoin as you can before the tri price triples. But wait, there's a problem. Why are there so many different shitcoins? Or rather, why are there so many seemingly identical shitcoins? Not only do they have the same token name, shitcoin, but they also have the same exact symbol as well, S-H-I-T. How in the world are you supposed to know which shitcoin Elon is tweeting about? And for that matter, how is it possible that all these ERC-20 tokens are so similar? Like, it's like if you went to the stock exchange to buy some Google stock, and there were five different stocks with the same ticker symbol. Like, is that even legal? In this video, I'm going to discuss the theory behind programmable currencies, and also the ERC-20 token contract. As I'm making this video, on Etherscan there are almost half a million ERC-20 token contracts already. Why in the world do we need so many of them? Instead of getting bogged down in the differences between, say, Tether and BNB, I think it's better to first start with an understanding of the differences and similarities between cryptocurrencies and the currencies that we use today. Let's think about the worlds before cryptocurrencies. In this simplified world, let's say we have two people, Alice and Bob, using only dollar bills. Let's say the system has $35 total, with Alice having 25 and Bob having 10. If Alice wants to give Bob $5, then Alice can physically hand Bob a $5 bill. So let's think about the requirements in our system so far. First, we need a way to know how many assets there are in total in the system. Secondly, we need to know how many assets each person has. And lastly, we need to allow parties to transfer money to each other. How would you design this using code? You can pause the video and think about it. If I were to use an object-oriented approach, I might have a class called Digital Money Supply. And in this class, I would have the total supply representing the amount of money in the system, which is an integer. And then I also have balances, which will keep track of the balance of each person. So this could be a mapping in which a string will map to an integer. So the string might represent a name, such as Alice, and the integer might represent the amount of money that Alice has. Using the earlier system, then in this digital money supply, the total supply might be 35, and the balances would have Alice with 25 and Bob with 10. So how are we going to transfer money in the system? If Alice wants to send Bob $5, then we're going to decrease Alice's balance by 5, and we're going to increase Bob's balance by five. To write this in code, we might have this function called transfer money, which will take in the sender, the receiver, and the amount. We are going to decrement the sender's balance by the amount that's being transferred, and we are going to increment the receiver's balance by that same amount. So to transfer money from Alice to Bob, I'm going to call transfer and pass in Alice as the sender, Bob as the receiver, and five as the amount being transferred. So wrapping it all together, we have our class called Digital Money Supply. We have Total Supply, keeping track of the total money in the system. We have Balances, which keep track of how much each person has. And we also have Transfer Money, which will allow a sender to send an arbitrary amount of money to a receiver. If you made it this far, then congratulations. You're already halfway there to understanding the ERC-20 token contract. But first, let's describe the notion of an interface. An interface can be used to describe the properties that are shared by different objects. So if we think about countries, for example, we have many different countries in the world, but they share similar characteristics. For example, every country has a name, every country has a capital, every country has a flag and a currency. In a similar vein, there are many different cryptocurrency tokens in the world, but each token has a name, a symbol, and a supply. So for the ERC-20 interface, we have properties like the total supply, which represents how many total assets there are. We have balance of, which is a way to find out how much is in a person's balance. And we have a method called transfer, which will allow transferring of assets between parties. Okay, I lied a little. There's actually a little bit more to the interface, but not much. So in addition to the previous method methods, we also have transfer from approve and allowance. If we go on GitHub and look at the ERC-20 token standard, then we can see the actual code. So again, there we have total supply, balance of allowance, transfer, approve, and transfer from. 
And then there are also two events called transfer and approval. Every ERC-20 contract has to implement the methods in that interface. If we look at an example from Open Zeppelin, their implementation of transfer looks very similar to the code that we've written earlier. For transferring money, we have the balance of the sender, and then we are going to subtract the amount that's being transferred from that sender. And then we have the balance of the recipient, and we are going to increment the balance of the recipient by that same amount. Going back to our earlier shitcoin example, now we have a better understanding of why there are so many shitcoins. To create an ERC-20 token, all you need to do is write code that implements the ERC-20 interface. So you can create a token, give it a token name, give it a token symbol, give it an initial supply, and implement the interfaces that allow users of your ERC-20 smart contract to, say, transfer tokens between themselves, to check the balances of a certain account, to approve transfers, etc. As long as you implement those parts of the interface, you can go ahead and create your token. There is no central or governing organization that is enforcing that token names are unique or that symbols for cryptocurrency tokens are unique. That's why it's extremely similar to copy other people's smart contracts and to create tokens that are exactly the same as existing tokens. Please stay tuned for part two and give a like and subscribe. If you have ideas of other topics that you'd like to see, please go ahead and leave them in the comments.